Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not wanting to babysit my neighbor's kids? I have a neighbor who's a typical Karen. She's a stay-at-home mom and has tried to befriend me countless times before. She sells some kind of multi-level marketing product. I recognize that pitch she used on me. She knows my boyfriend and I are child-free and assumes that we have so much free time and she keeps dropping hints that she needs a sitter for her three kids. I was not interested in befriending her. She gives off the vibe that I need a glass of wine to get me through the day and her kids are the most spoiled brats I have ever had the displeasure of knowing. I have seen her kid break stuff and throw the worst tantrums at community gatherings and the neighborhood parties pre-pandemic. Surprisingly, she's still liked by a lot of neighbors who are also stay-at-home moms who think they're oppressed. I have also heard from one other neighbor that she's made some racist remarks towards me and said my boyfriend would do better with his own kind of people. For context, I am Indian and my boyfriend is white. So last week, my BF's brother and his wife asked if their kids could come over to our house and spend about a week here. They are both working from home, and they said their workload is piling up. We didn't mind. They would just have online classes from our house. We also have a pool in our backyard that they like spending time in. My neighbor noticed this and was livid that I would spend time with my own niece and nephew, but not her precious kids. She has since told everyone that my niece and nephew are over at my house and that I absolutely hate her kids. I heard from one neighbor who told me about her racist remarks that I have offered to watch her kids, but never showed up, none of which is true. I barely know her and told her before that I'm not great with kids in general. So she thinks I'm lying because I can have my niece and nephew over at my house. She has got most of the neighborhood on her side, most of which are stay-at-home moms who think they deserve the world because they had kids. They sent me messages asking why I lied about not being good with kids and why I wouldn't offer to watch her kids when I clearly have free time because I'm CF and every mama deserves a break. So am I the a-hole for lying? Because I like spending time with my niece and not her kids? Comment said, not the a-hole. If she can't manage to bring up kids that you would want to spend time with instead of avoiding like the plague, why would she expect you to want to babysit? Not only that, but if you hear any more comments about it, tell the people you hear it from that you've heard she's been racist towards you. And surely, she doesn't want one of your kind to take care of them. Another comment said, not the a-hole. Like this mother, I had kids. Like this mother, I'm a stay-at-home mom. Who could do with a break? Unlike this mother, I recognize that nobody is obliged to put themselves out because I had kids. Not even the childless couple down the street. Of course, you want to spend time with your niece and nephews. They're family. And more to your point, it's your choice to spend time with them. This handful of wet sand needs to pull her head in. You being childless is no reason to expect you to watch her feral spawn. The next story is titled, Would I be the asshole if I don't share my inheritance with my half-siblings? My father left my mom when I was 10 years old. He was having a baby with his girlfriend, now wife. My mom was a stay-at-home mom and didn't finish college. She had gotten pregnant with my older brother. My father was an ass and made the divorce as crappy as possible for my mom. We ended up moving in with my paternal grandparents. He was their only child, and they were disappointed in him. They helped my mom go back to school. Once she finished school, she wanted to pay them back, but they wouldn't let her. They also basically disowned my father. He was invited over for Thanksgiving and Christmas, but that was about it. They did love their other grandchildren, though. They always provided gifts and contributed to their education. My grandmother passed away a few years ago from breast cancer. And my grandfather passed away last year from complications related to COVID. And he left everything to my brother and me. It wasn't a huge estate, and it's not life-changing money. Both my brother and I are well-established in our careers. They left my father $500. The lawyer explained that it was a way of avoiding him being able to challenge the will. They also left each of my half-siblings $10,000. My brother and I each got over $100,000. My grandfather said that since my brother and I had grown up without a father, 
by his choice, but as other children had then, he felt this was fair. He also left my mom his house and some money. She had been taking care of them for a long time, and they never stopped thinking of her as a daughter. My father approached my brother and I recently, saying that his other kids are struggling with their finances, and that we should split everything with them, since we really don't need the money. He also tried to get my mom to renounce her inheritance. She laughed in his face and asked for all the child support he owed. I get that's not my half-sibling's fault, but they had a dad to take care of them growing up, and we didn't. So neither my brother nor I agreed to share. Now my father, his wife, and all my half-siblings are calling us a-holes for being so greedy and not helping them through the hard times they are going through. Am I the a-hole? Comment said, not the a-hole. You know that your sperm donor isn't going to leave you or your brother anything when he does. Your grandmother and grandfather loved you and wanted to help you guys. And I'm glad that your mom had their support. They sound like wonderful people. Another comment said, not the a-hole. It's not your father's money to distribute. It's your grandfather's. He clearly knew what he wanted to do with his property. Your dad is the a-hole here for thinking he's entitled to something that's clearly not his. I'm so glad you had such loving grandparents who saw how great your mom was and how awful your father was. Another comment said, not the a-hole. Your grandparents made extremely deliberate choices since they gave their son $500 and your half-siblings $10,000. To do anything other than his wishes would be to disrespect him because a last will and testament speaks for the dead. If for some reason you want to be generous, fund a charity that you or your grandparents supported instead of relatives who they didn't want to bequeath anything to. I've never realized there were so many absolutely shameless people in the world who attempt to guilt people into giving them money when they don't deserve it. And of course, the corollary is that I'm a bit surprised that people like OP question. They're not handing over money to greedy people and feel guilty about it. While the money isn't enough to retire on, it certainly is potentially life-changing in the sense that it would either fund tuition for your children or, if invested in something safe, like a low-fee index fund, should yield about $750,000. And that is certainly life-changing for you when you retire. The difference for most people between a comfortable retirement with no money worries or reduced to potentially a very meager life. The next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not kissing the girl I have been dating on the mouth because I saw her kiss her dog on the mouth? So I'm pretty sure I'm not the a-hole, but she reacted so fiercely, I started doubting whether I overreacted. So I've been going out with this girl for a week or three, grabbing coffee, hooking up, watching a movie. Nothing serious or exclusive since we both had long-lasting relationships before and, well, we were just scooping each other out, more or less. Not sure whether to commit to anything, but kissing and touching, etc. And eh, normal at this point. So I take her back to her place this morning. We enter and her dog jumps up at her. She pets him and so forth. Then she allows her dog to lick her face and mouth. And let me be clear, she was speaking while she did this, so no doubt her tongue even got in her mouth. Well, I'm just grossed out at this point. So I wait a moment, given I want to say goodbye before driving back home, and she pretty much walks at me, thanks me for a nice evening, and goes in for the kiss. Well, I obviously push her away, not hard or anything, just to keep our distance and say, yeah, it was lovely. Well, she starts raising her voice about me not allowing her to kiss me and ask me why. So I tell her, the dog just licked her mouth. So that's gross. She starts calling me names, saying that I'm being a douchebag and a pussy and every other name in the book to the points where tears well in her eyes and all her neighbors are probably awake. So I just walk out and go home pretty stunned about the whole situation. Yeah, I'm just confused. I don't think it was being a douche. And I've never seen her act like this before. Maybe I was a douche somehow. Comment said, not the a-hole. She most likely lashed out because she was embarrassed. Still makes her the a-hole, though. You're not an a-hole for being grossed out, and now she knows that you don't like kissing her after that. I would just forget about it. Another comment said, not the a-hole. I get that people love their dogs and find it perfectly acceptable to have it lick their mouths. However, I find it gross and would act in the exact same way. She was T.A. for getting so irate at you. 
She isn't girlfriend material, dude. The next story is titled, Am I the A-Hole for Not Letting My Neighbor Park in My Driveway and Possibly Calling a Tow Truck? Now hear me out. I'm a 22-year-old female. My boyfriend is 25-year-old male. Just recently moved out of a one-bedroom apartment to a beautiful three-bedroom house. My aunt's friend, Jay, is loaded with houses. She had about five houses. We offered to fill space and rent out one of her local houses that she never uses. She loved the idea, and we made all the plans and went to check it out about a week later. While we were at the place taking our first look, we saw two cars in the driveway. Jay explained to us that the neighbors to the right have five cars and needed an extra driveway. Since she's never there, she agreed to let them use it until when we move in on the first and that they would need to talk to us about possibly letting them keep one car there. Well, we moved in on the first and we came by with our moving truck. Driveway was empty. We unloaded everything. And when I left to drop off the truck, day rental, and my boyfriend followed behind in his car while we were gone, my mom called me saying the neighbors parked their car in the driveway as soon as we pulled out. She went out and mentioned once again to them to talk to us when we get back but for now, please move it, since I need a place for my car. Well, that was yesterday. I went to work last night when I got home around 4 a.m. this morning. I have to squeeze into my driveway because, once again, their car is parked next to mine. I felt so disrespected and ignored that I'm not sure what to do. They wait until I leave, so I can't do anything. Now my sister says that I'm an a-hole due to having only one car and my driveway can squeeze in two cars. However, I have a lot of worries. Even though I do only have one car, I do have a lot of family that visits. I also worry about damages to mine or his car. Not to mention his car is constantly breaking down from what I've heard. Comet said, not the a-hole. When you pay to rent a house, you're also paying for the yard, the driveway, and other outdoor spaces. If they're being sneaky when they park there, leave a note on their windshield, letting them know they can't park there anymore. Another comment said, not the a-hole. It's your driveway that you are paying for. If he wants space that badly, charge him rent to use it. Otherwise, he needs to keep his property on his property. You should not have to worry about having access to your own home just because they have too many vehicles. It sounds like they have been told multiple times that they need to speak with you to get permission, and since they are not doing that, go ahead and call the non-emergency line for your local law enforcement and inform them of the trespassing. They can come out and explain things, and that way there'll be a legal record to cover you if you have to have it towed away. The last story is titled, Am I the A-Hole for Leaving Dinner Early and Causing a Scene in Front of My Wife's Family? Let me preface this by saying that I love my wife. I just think she can be a little inconsiderate at times. My son has what my wife calls a deadpan voice. While I admit he doesn't show much enthusiasm when speaking, I think he has a right to express himself in his own way. My wife, how, my wife however, insists that he needs to be more enthusiastic and vocal. She often tells him to speak up or say it with feeling, and I can tell that it gets to him. My wife recently started taking a different approach, which I can tell really bothers him. When addressing him, she talks in the most enthusiastic voice she can muster. She'll even go so far as to clap her hands and make facial expressions as she talks to him. How was school today? Tell me about it. Speak loudly and with enthusiasm. Think kindergarten teacher talking to her students. My son just looks at her like she's crazy, and I can tell he's embarrassed. I have tried to privately talk to my wife about this, but she doesn't seem to get it. She insists her way is the right way, and that our son needs to learn how to be more outgoing. So fast forward to yesterday. We were celebrating Christmas at my sister-in-law's house, and my son asked me to pass the gravy. My wife, in her usual enthusiastic voice, started saying, Say it with feeling, honey! Can you ask for the gravy with enthusiasm, I snapped. It's one thing to do this when it's just the two of us, but doing this in front of our family was too much. I got up, took my son, took him to the movies, leaving my wife and the other family members. After we got back, my wife pulled me aside and absolutely ripped into me for causing a scene. She said I was embarrassing her and that I was out of line, I told her that I was tired of her trying to fix our son's personality, and that I felt that it was a good opportunity to make a point. 
My wife's family hasn't said anything to me, but I've been getting a lot of judgmental looks from them. I just wanted to stick up for my son. But did I go too far? Am I the a-hole? Comment said, not the a-hole. You actively brought this up multiple times in private with your wife. She has lost all claim to ask for this matter to remain in private because she refuses to act appropriately after being addressed. You are looking out for the mental health of your son and didn't force him to sit there and be exposed to harassment from your wife. Another comment said, not the a-hole. She's unintentionally telling your son that he isn't normal or good enough as he is, which is damaging to his self-esteem. I understand that she thinks she's doing the right thing, but she isn't. Fifteen is a crappy age to have a parent constantly enforcing that you're not normal. You did the right thing and let your son know he has a safe place with you. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.